Now that the saw is all parallel, or the tracks are parallel, um, we can now set up the log so that it's parallel to the saw. What you need to do here, or what I tend to do, is, is I just simply come around to here. We've got a little bit of a hill here, so we've got to hold this back a bit, stop it from rolling down. Hook the tape measure onto the track. doesn't matter where you put it, but just put your tape on and measure down to the heart. I'll go up the other end now, measure down, and you can see this is the heart at this point here. You can see how the rings are getting tighter and tighter. That's telling me that the heart's in there. So I'm a little bit short on the mark. So what I need to do now is move the power head back. And I want to wind that down. Put it back here again. Once you get within that half a centimetre or a centimetre, she's good enough. So we just go back up the other end now and check that again. That's perfect. So what we've done now is we've set the saw up so the, the saw blade or the carriage is parallel to the, to the heart or the pith, which is this piece here, in the horizontal position. Now we also need to set it up so it's parallel to the heart in the vertical position. To do that you simply measure off the tracks. So you hook your tape onto your track, come across and grab your measurement there. We've got a 132 centimetres. Head up the other end. Do the same, measure off. Now this end here, this is probably the heavier end of the two and we're going to have to move this. So what I'll do now is, is I'll measure from this one and I'll come up to the lighter end of the log and move it. So I, I simply measure across and we're looking at 119. Before I do that though, I'm going to lock this in so that it doesn't slide around on me. On my 132, I want 119. So I just simply walk over to this side of it, take this wedge out of the way, put my bar in underneath it. That's 119. But, but what you've got to now do is just check that the other end's the same because the more you have it hanging out over the bearer, as you pivot one end, the, the centre of the log moves back the other way. So this won't be the same measurement now. We're 122, so I've just got to go that way another three centimetres. If, you, if your log's too heavy to slide on the bearers, or if you, um, you haven't got a crowbar, or the log's on the ground, when you go to set up, if you can't move the log, then you can move the, the frame or the sawmill. And to do that, all you need to do is just simply undo the wing nut on the stay post, loosen that off, make sure that the engine frame's up the other end so that you're not trying to push around too much weight, and then you can just simply slide it left or right, whatever distance you need to, to, to get it so that it's set up parallel to the heart or parallel to the outside of the log, depending on how you're sawing it. If you're going to move the end frames rather than the log, you now have to go back and just make sure that your tracks have got no twist in them. Let's go back around to the side, have a little look. That still looks pretty good to me. Then it's just a matter of chopping it down. So there's a number of methods of fixing your logs in place. We will show you the rest of them later. These are, these are the Lucas Mill log chop. They have no points, you're not, you're not driving a point into the log at any stage. Um, all this is doing is it's, it's acting the same as a wooden wedge. With a wooden wedge what you're doing is you're driving the wedge down in between the bearer and the log and you're relying on the weight of the log to hold the wedge in place. And that stops the whole lot from moving around. This thing here, what we do is we, we do the same thing. We just drive it in between the bearer and the log. Uh, the only difference between this and a wooden wedge is with a wooden wedge as the log gets lighter the vibration resonating through the log causes the wedge to tickle out and then you this as you get down towards the bottom of the log your logs can move on you with this it has this little pad on the inside as you as you screw the wing nut in it pushes the pad out locks the whole lot into the side of your bearer here so that it can't come back out on you 
So, so all we do with this is drop it on there, do it up until it's just touching the bearer. You do it up that point, but don't do it up tight, so that when you hit this, if it's loose and you hit it, the whole lot can, can bounce out again. When you, when you do that up, so it's, it's just grabbing, it can't bounce back out. So you give it a good hard whack, lock it into place, half a turn more is all you need. You don't need to do it up tight and, and that'll keep it there. Go around the other side, put your wedge on, tap him in, half a turn, that's all you need. That log's now nice and secure, it won't go anywhere.